Hi class, Dr. Richard J. Sands here. I'll be your professor for the this course for the upcoming eight weeks, and I want to say hello and welcome to Leadership Theory and Practice uh, ORGS 500. This is a very exciting class, and I'm excited to be your professor as we go through this course week by week. So to start off with, in addition to saying hello, wanted to take a few minutes and just look through your classroom portal, all right? So one of the first things I want to point out is I want to go here to the announcement section here on the right. Because I do have uh, some announcements posted already. And please be sure to check back here frequently because I will, will post more as the class goes on. So what I've started off uh, before I post this welcome uh, message is to uh, briefly introduce yourself in our classroom community area. So you can click on that one. Uh, I have an APA sample uh, paper and video, APA title, uh, page formatting, uh, resources and in-text citations, and assignment word counts. So those I have uh, already uh, posted in your core in your classroom, and uh, it's uh, do please take a minute to read through each one. Now, for example, on this uh, APA sample paper and video, uh, ultimately, uh, you know, at the, at the college level, all your papers are considered research papers and it requires the APA formatting. Uh, that's, that's the rule. The only exception is if in the, the body of the assignment, it says APA not required. So unless it says APA not required, it's APA formatting, period. All right. Um, so with that, uh, I took some time and put a brief video together that walks you through what you really need to know about APA formatting for these size of papers, right? Most of the papers you'll be writing um, in these courses are really just a, a few pages, right? For example, my dissertation for my doctoral thesis was, you know, a few hundred pages, and I think my reference list was like 300 or something, and it was very layered. We don't need all that. So what I did is went through the APA manual and just pulled out a few of the key things that you really need to pay attention to and master in writing uh, papers uh, at this level and really even up through, you know, uh, into master's uh level courses all right so the video is like three minutes long please look at it if you have any questions let me know i also attached uh, a paper it's just a fictitious paper that i had uh, put together that um, reflects what proper apa formatting is so <clears throat> you can get an idea of what your paper should look like also uh, lastly on apa uh, I do require an expanded title page. In the APA manual, it gives uh, the requirements for title page, which is just a few, uh, a few items, um, I think like three maybe. I require, and, and in the manual it does say, you know, this at a min minimum or what your professor requires, something like that. So um, I do require a little bit more, but that's okay because I have uh, listed out in what I do require. All right, so please watch that. Let's go back to um, the announcements because when I talk about title page, I also also you'll see the announcement here that says APA title page. There we go. And so now what I've done is I've just basically, um, uh, this is an attachment, but it looks like it came in and just kind of filled the, the page here, which is okay. So these are the, these are the items the, that I require on your title page, um, your site name, your name, university name, course number, excuse me, course name, course number, my name written out just like that in the assignment due date not the date that you're writing it or the date so you turn it in is whatever that due date is so that's the date you want to there if you're doing 
a group paper, then you would put the name of the individuals in the group right here where it says your name. All right, so pretty straightforward. Okay, and um, <clears throat> next couple here, uh, I won't I won't open them, but I'll just tell you what they're about. But please do references and in-text citations. So when you use a reference, either in a PowerPoint, a written document, and or your uh, initial post on your weekly uh, post, then you need to have at least a reference in you know uh, your re the assignment the uh, the requirements may say more than one uh, and if it does then that's how many you'll do if it if it doesn't say then you have to have at least one reference for your initial post on your discussion question and that reference you, that reference needs to be used as an in-text citation at least once in whatever you're writing goes to the same for uh, actual written research papers. However many references are required, you need to use that reference at least one time as an in-text citation somewhere in the body of your paper, okay? And then uh, lastly, what I have already posted here is assignment word counts. <clears throat> so as you go through, uh, you know, week to week and your assignments, usually give a word count like five you know 350 to 500 words 500 words 750 something like that that's just a guide it's kind of give you a rough idea of how long the paper is going to be um, don't don't use that as an absolute use that as a guide what I'm going to grade you on is um, how well you basically responded to the requirement how much detail, how much breadth and depth, that kind of thing. Now, with that said, you know, if it says a 750 word assignment, you don't want to turn in a 10,000 word assignment. That's a little over the top because you do want to have concise clarity without ambiguity. The main point I want to convey here is don't use the words as an absolute. Use them as a guide for about how long your paper will be. I grade you on what you submit how well you respond to the requirement, how much detail, breadth, and depth, etc. That's what I'm grading you on. So if you just stop at 750, for example, and you don't cover everything in the proper detail, breadth, and depth, then you're not going to get a good grade. If you have any questions on any of these posts I've put in already, just feel free to email me. Also, any you know uh, announcements that I do post uh, throughout the course, if you have any questions, uh, just reach out and be happy to explain them. All right, so that's the announcement section. So let's go back to Course Home. All right. Oh, that went way far out. All right, that's where I meant to go. Okay. So uh, when you navigate through Course, uh, through your course, you can, of course, go through week to week by clicking on the tiles here or navigate here on the left hand side. Now, mine may look a little different because I have additional, you know, professor tabs and things. Um, what uh, you will want to do all the time, uh, not only look at what your uh, assignments are, uh, you also want to take a look at which I'd recommend doing first off as well, is looking at your course syllabus. Uh, because your uh, syllabus will align to my grading rubric, and that's how you will get graded on your assignments. So when you go from week to week, what I'd recommend, go through your course, you know, go through each week, take a look at it, so you get familiar with the whole course end to end, and then take a look at your syllabus, get familiar with that. What's important again, as you look at, let's scroll on down here. Okay, so your assessment rubric, so these are for your discussion, you know, for your weekly discussions, and that's how they'll be graded. All right, and then your 
uh, your first uh, assignment here, which is um, uh, an assessment rubric, annotated uh, bibliography, the concept of leadership. So that'll be your first assignment. And then, you know, this is how you're going to be graded. Uh, the criteria, description of the problem and research related to the problem. So description of the problem. So you're going to describe the problem and research related to the problem. Okay. And so exemplary is you have skillfully and comprehensively researched and articulates the problem. All right, so like I said earlier about the word count reference, this says right here, skillful, skillfully and comprehensively. So that's telling you, you know, you know, you know, it needs to be thorough. All right, so breadth and depth of understanding uh, demonstrates uh, detailed knowledge in one or more um, disciplines and integrates knowledge across the disciplinary boundaries. And then, of course, you, you know, always want to shoot for exemplary. So gathers, reviews, evaluates on down there. So that's what you want to use as your guidepost. You know, this column, this exemplary column is what you want to use a guidepost for doing your assignment because you want to get an A, right? Okay. And then uh, written communication. Uh, uses a breadth and depth vocabulary, approaches discipline and context, uh, consistently applies APA formatting, etc. So... Uh, when you look at this one, really these first two uh, rows are the content of your paper. And then the last one is about how well you put it together, your grammar, your and everything else. Now, when you look at the um, assignments, let's go back to the assignment. So uh, when you go to week one, you'll see that your paper is due uh, week two at 8 a.m. And uh, just as a point of reference, uh, I made this video on January 2nd, 2023 uh, for this class I'm teaching currently. I may reuse this video again when I teach the same class. So if this date happens to not for you be January 16th, 2023, that just means I made this video for this class at the beginning of 2023, and I reused it for the next time I taught the class. The important thing is due Monday, week two, 8 a.m. All right, so let's click on that. Okay. So when we take a look at the this uh, assignment requirements, okay, so... There are many benefits of developing an annotated bibliography. First, this assignment will help you identify relevant academic articles and summarize key information that can be used to successfully complete your final assignment. Second, an annotated bibliography demonstrates that you have uh, conducted extensive research to support your claims and uh, claims and arguments. Uh, most importantly, the intent behind an annotated bibliography assignment is to help you think critically about each of the article's uh, content and apply their concepts and strategies in the field. So that's overall, and I'm just going to go through this one assignment, then, you, you know, you can apply the concepts and what I'm talking about to the next. Assignment instructions. Uh, select at least three uh, credible articles on the concept of leadership. Focus on effective leadership skills and attribute leadership uh, styles, beliefs, values, ethics, and character. Uh, synthesize the author's main ideas in your own words. So it synthesizes just that. You want to read it and then um, kind of uh, uh, generate a condensed version in your words, reflective of what the author said. Okay, that's what synthesizing it means. Evaluate each source while highlighting the major claims and arguments of the author. So you could have, you know, a long written document. Well, what's what's you know what's the key points, right? What is the author? What's the key points the author is trying to make? That's basically what they're saying there. Um, 
be wary of each author's personal bias. So just that a personal bias is um, when an author conducts research on a topic that would be fact based, right? So it's based on the facts. However, because we are human, we can put a personal bias based on our own personal experiences into the article where maybe it's not purely factual, but it's factual, but the author sways it just a little bit because of their personal bias based bias based on you know their own personal experiences. So um, that's always fun to see what that looks like, right? All right, and then uh, point five, make sure that the author has su uh, sufficient material to support his or her claims. So for example, did the auth author write this article based on one research document? Well, that's not research, that's just, yeah. So you want to take a look at how many articles this author has utilized and read uh, in writing his own document, okay? Okay, so that's the assignment instruction. So then it says requirements. Uh, word count 250 to 500. So there, there you go. Um, that's a guide. Uh, citation requirements, you have to have three to four. APA formatting and then your your plagiarism check okay so um let's see here scrolling down and yeah very good so what you want to do is um you know make sure you look at the apa formatting every paper every paper unless it says not apa format so every paper will have your title page like i showed you and then um you'll have your on this page two has your paper title your page numbers are always in the right hand corner and the first thing you're going to write is an introduction now it doesn't say it here specifically but it says apa formatting every a paper every apa formatted paper is to have an introduction the body and the conclusion and the references on a new page in the last that's every paper regardless so the introduction basically is I'm going to tell you what I'm I'm going to introduce you to what I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you and then your conclusion is hey this is what I just told you those are number of um, tried and true points of reaffirmation so introduction your body and again the body is your assignment and then a conclusion then the last page is you know what starts your last page is references if you needed to do um, some exhibits and things, then that would go after the references, but you know, usually you don't in these courses. So what you'll want to do when you think about um, your paper and you think about uh, APA formatting, right? What you want to use on all papers is what's called at a minimum level one headers. Okay, a level one header is great because what it does is if you go, if you put the structure of your paper together, you can you can start with when you're on page two because your title page is easy. You know, put that in on page two, which really starts where you're writing. <clears throat> you can use your level one headers as uh, an outline. That's what I did. That's what I've always done in my academic and even in, in work is to use those level one headers center and bold uh, on your paper as an outline. So for example, your your paper would um, um, have uh, you know your introduction and then this says description of the problem and research related to the problem. So what I would have is and this is a short paper, it's your first one. So you'd have you know your paper title, you don't write introduction. It's understood the first paragraph three to five sentences is an introduction. So paper title, and then, which is like I said, paragraph, then the next thing is gonna be your level one header of the first thing you're gonna write in your paper. And as you can see what you're writing about here, and this is such a short paper, um, you're really going to probably have one level one header, and which it says description of the problem and research related to the problem. So your level one header, you'd always want to short to three, four words. 
and not a long sentence. So I would take that and I would take it as a description, uh, description, uh, description research. Uh, and that would align to what that requirement is. Now, as you get into other papers um, that get a little more um, detailed, then you may have most likely no more level one headers. Okay. There's that, and I think that's about what I want to cover today. So again, um, check your announcements. You can always look at your syllabus and your uh, course requirements. And if you have any questions, you know, email me. I get my email, on my phone. If you have any questions, you know, I respond right away. Uh, for some reason, if I don't, if I didn't see it, and sometimes over the weekend. I'm a little slower in responding, but usually still right away. If you have any issues uh, where you need immediate assistance, then you can always text me and I'll respond back, you know, as well. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much. We're going to have a, it's gonna be a great uh, course and God bless.